Welcome to the Solar Panel Simulation and Modeling Presentation. My name is Ryan Rudder. I'm Ryan Peacock. And I'm Brad Crowther. For our project, we chose to model the solar tracking technology used in solar panels. We were interested in this project because uh, this is a technology used today that has room for improvement. Many solar panels are run on a timer. Um, others do implement a solar tracking um, controller. But this is something that needs to be um, optimized to improve the economy and energy um, gain and performance of these solar panels. So when thinking about this problem, our general solution approach was to try and find a model of how we could uh, model the light as well as how our solar panel would react to the light in various positions. Um, to do this, we created various Python codes. One of them was more of just an optimization using logic, and then we decided later on to try and implement a P-only controller. Um, and then after developing the P-only controller, we built our apparatus and then used that to m better fine-tune our controller with our gain and whatnot to get the results that we were hoping for. So when it comes to the simulation, starting here up in the upper left corner, uh, this graph is showing our modeling of the light intensity. We assumed that anything beyond, anything within 180 degrees of the the light source, the light source being up here at the peak, um, could be seen by the sensor, and so then you would try to maximize up to that point. Um, our like our first attempt was is shown here in the bottom left corner. But this is a logic optimization. You can see that there's a lot of oscillation as it gets to the set point, and there's also not really a dynamic response. It's kind of steady and goes at the same speed despite how far away it could be from the set point, um, which is part of the reason we wanted to go to a P-only controller, because as you can see, there's a much more dynamic response as it starts really far away from the set point. It will quickly get to a point much closer and then slow down as it gets closer to the set point. This graph shows the intensity that the sensor is reading versus the intensity set point. And you can see that as we're move as the model is moving, it gets closer to the set point to where we want it with minimal os oscillations. Our experimental apparatus consisted of our mock uh, photovoltaic cell, which is located right here. Uh, taking the place of the solar panel, we used just a photoresistor. Um, and, and attach that whole apparatus on top of a stepper motor, which would be controlled by the driver and an Arduino Uno. We decided to use a stepper motor so that we could quickly and easily optimize the location and have very accurate control of where that solar panel is actually facing. This is our video or a demonstration of how the solar panel has set point capabilities. Um, the light source is is placed at a specific position and the apparatus quickly finds that position, the optimized position. You'll notice a slight bit of oscillation at this point and that's just making sure that it's still at that optimized location and that that light source hasn't moved too far. That oscillation also allows us to um, model solar tracking where the light uh, flashlight is acting as the sun. So in this video, you'll see that as it starts to move, the stepper motor responds and will move the panel so that it is in the best position that it's receiving the maximum uh, signal. Uh, the farther away from that light source it is, the faster the response, and as it approaches the optimal position, it will slow down and become more accurate. By doing this project, we were able to successfully implement a P-only controller to optimize the location of our solar panel and successfully model and track um, that, that capability. We also realized that our model that we developed as well as our apparatus is simplistic in its design. We, to fully implement this in the real world, we would probably need to add a second dimension of movement in the solar panel as well as take more into consideration disturbances such as clouds and other things that would obstruct the, the light from the sun. Overall, it was a good experience in implying the theory that we've learned during the semester in process control and building a model to um, address a real-life scenario. It was an insightful and challenging experience. Thank you.